What's up guys, we have another reaction video and we are focusing on China, okay? And China's massive unemployment problem. Uh, this directly has an impact. Recently China's official media. This has a direct, direct impact on us and our economy. So we should definitely pay attention to what's happening over there because they already <laughs> are in dire straits. And if this unemployment problem uh, continues, uh, they will definitely collapse, which will send not only ripples, but tsunami throughout the world economic um, system. Has been promoting selling via online live streaming. Why? Selling via live streaming refers to a new sales model that involves showing products close up. 来来来，这个是蓝色啊，上百千花论斤卖是纯金的啊，所以只是说不包邮，打这个包。Live streaming generates a daily revenue of thirty thousand RMB or over four thousand US dollars for me. Each time I do live streaming, I got at least fifty thousand to sixty thousand views and up to more than two hundred thousand views. Basically, demand outstrips supply. I sell all I have in stock, and they're sold out in one second. Talk about OnlyFans, right? This this lady is doing awesome, but I'm sure uh, this is probably like only one percent of the the live streaming uh, population. So let's see. Providing consultation and answering questions and guiding purchases via online platforms and live streaming. Similar to Amazon Live, it has become a trend in China in the past five years. Yes. The Chinese government is trying to use success stories to get more people involved. However, it fails to tell the Chinese people that the government hopes to turn the unemployed into live salespeople, who can provide a form of flexible employment, hence being a viable way of solving China's serious unemployment problem. Uh, at least China is trying to do something with their unemployed because there is a massive, massive unemployment problem in China. And um, uh, everyone is, more and more people are shopping online. This may be a way for them to uh, alleviate some of that uh, problem. Let's see. God damn. Even farmers! Flexible employment is a new term that Beijing has coined. So well, do you think it's ever going to be like this? You know, usually China is behind, uh, you know, three, four, five years in technology uh, in, in, in the online space and more uh, like with semiconductors and stuff like that. But in this, in this area, I think uh, Amazon and uh, Spotify and all this, uh, they're going to be taking more and more notice to this and the people as well. So uh, TikTok and all that, I think definitely we're going to be following them. What do you think about that? That it can avoid using terms like unemployment or semi-unemployment. China's leading university, Renmin University of China, released a blue paper entitled China Flexible Employment Development Report in 2021 which states that tapping into the potential of flexible employment has become one of the important and key driving forces for stabilizing and promoting employment. Flexible employment includes driving for ride-hailing companies, courier drivers, takeout delivery workers, domestic helpers, gig economy, operating online stores, selling via live streaming, and so on. For many people who are unemployed, there aren't many options available. On the evening of December 28, 2021, a man named Yu Minhong officially launched his first live stream selling on TikTok. He sells mainly agricultural products. Who is Yu Minhong? He is the founder and president of New Oriental Group based in Beijing, the largest education and training organization in China. Ah. In July 2021, the government issued a policy to reduce the burden of homework and off-campus training on students. It devastated off-campus training institutions, including out. New Oriental. Now Yu has chosen to be a live salesperson. During three-hour live streaming, he sold about 790,000 US dollars in agricultural <laughs> products. God damn. Yu has been one of the few lucky ones who've lost their jobs. He has done well because he has a substantial fortune and significant name recognition. He has managed to turn himself into a live stream celebrity. 
For countless ordinary Chinese struggling with unemployment, what they are facing is a long dark night. Yeah, talk about long dark night. You know this this uh, tutoring tutoring business. You know, uh, it it literally wiped out millions and millions of jobs for uh, young people and people who uh, were in this education industry, and they just wiped them out. There's a there's so much more into this, and maybe we'll get into it. If you want, you can leave it in the comments. But luckily, this person here has used his fame and his fortune to transition to live streaming but again 99.9 percent .9 of the the people in this industry are just they're they're just uh they, they won't be able to do anything close to this china's economy is struggling but small businesses which employ a massive population have been hit the hardest yes the year 2021 is the worst in recent years for entrepreneurs in china the South China Morning Post reported at the end of 2021 that some 4.37 million small and medium-sized businesses, or SMEs, closed permanently in China in the first 11 months of 2021. That is huge. You know, uh, 4.7 million. Even though they have a large, they have a large population. 4.7 million businesses, uh, and they employ other people. Imagine how large. Uh, a big of an impact is is that and I know for a fact that China's you know power issues, their supply chain issues, their commodity issues, also um, with the with the Beijing with the you know China Beijing Olympics Winter Olympics coming up, the government has forced has forced shutdowns to reduce the traffic and reduce pollution, and they literally could not you know many many high high huge percentage of these uh, these uh, industry um, industrial businesses small businesses that were forced to shut down because of uh, uh this uh, you know because of china's just you know boom snap their fingers and hey you got to shut down they're not coming back so this is massive while 1.32 million new smes opened in the same period that is more than three times the number of closures than new business startups damn it's expected that the number of smes written off in 2021 is likely to exceed the number in 2020 which was 4.45 million the number in 2021 is expected to be a record high, a figure almost twice as high as in 2019 and about 10 times as high as in 2018. In 2018, the ratio of new registrations to deregistrations was 25, meaning that one closure was accompanied by 25 new registrations. Data from China's public registration tracking company, Tianyan Cha, shows that the rate of deregistration of Chinese SMEs exceeds the number of newly registered enterprises for the first time in 20 years. First time in 20 years. Let me tell you something. Once this trend starts, and this is a, it seems like a very substantial downtrend, it's very hard to get back going because these people, these small, medium-sized businesses, these entrepreneurs, they put their life into it, their life savings into it. They put everything into this and they lost everything. So they cannot easily start a new business because they just lost everything they have. And now uh, the real estate crunch, not, not even not, not even a crunch, it's a freaking real estate crisis that's happening in China. Their wealth, uh, is either in you know these small businesses, but mostly about seventy percent is in uh, their real estate, and that's going down. So if you're losing money in your in your 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 life savings in real estate, that's going down. And these small businesses, you know, you put your rest of your money into these small businesses, they're collapsing. It's not gonna it's not gonna change uh, anytime anytime soon. So we're looking at multiple years, if not a decade or two, before these numbers could hopefully uh, for these people uh, and for, for China to start going back up again. Even this data is likely to be somewhat smaller than the reality. Yeah. At the 2021-2022 China Economic Conference organized by a Chinese think tank in mid-December, a former Chinese finance minister publicly criticized the government's statistics for failing to reflect the economic downturn, yes. reporting only good news but not bad. They Though, do all the time. 71 is widely regarded as an outspoken reformist in the Chinese government. He said the government has failed to publish the facts on the other side of the coin, such as the fact that businesses are struggling to operate, that it's difficult to cancel official registrations, and that most businesses aren't actually active. Government this is, you know, they're really hurting themselves by doing this. They try to, they try to cover up all the real information, but they actually need to be open and honest about it so they can really 
they could understand the true picture, the true nature of everything, and also the people have to prepare. So this has been going on for as long as uh, the CCCP has been around. CCCP? That's, <laughs> yeah, the, the Chinese, the Communist Party uh, has been around. And I don't think it's going to change anytime soon, but whatever numbers we're seeing, so how bad these numbers are, is probably just a fraction of the true, true carnage of that's what's happening right now. When statistics only count the number of new jobs, but don't follow up on whether new workers have been laid off in six months or later. In the last two years, private companies in mainland China have been subjected to a series of crackdowns from the government including large companies such as Alibaba, Tencent, Meituan, New Oriental, etc. Compared to Yeah, the Chinese government is really putting the grip on these high-flying tech companies. They want to show who's boss and they have been doing that with the top richest, most powerful um, CEOs in China and they're going to continue. This again is something that will backfire because these companies were the driving force of innovation, jobs, new money, and reputation. So it's gonna really backfire and I feel it's gonna end really badly if they continue to do, to do um, this type of policy. To large companies, SMEs have a much harder time surviving the economic downturn. Small companies lack bargaining power with suppliers and their access to financial support is often less stable. Publicly available data from the Chinese government shows that SMEs are the backbone of China's economy, accounting for half of China's tax revenue, 60% of GDP, and 80% of urban employment. Damn. Therefore, if this trend continues for China's SMEs, it will mean slower growth and lower economic vitality in the future. At this point, we see no clear signs that the CCP is trying to improve the situation. According to a December 31 report in China's Securities Daily, the latest news is that 14,000 gaming-related companies have been written off so far since July 2021. In 2020, 18,000 game companies were written off. Game approval by the government has been suspended since July 22, 2021. It's been five months now. Without approval of game license numbers, the games developed by private companies can't be released which means no revenue. This is sad because um, they were really growing this gaming industry. And, and, and this, they could have put a, they could have had a stronghold in the gaming industry because gaming, metaverse and all that, that is booming. But now they're cutting off a huge, huge, uh, powerful force uh, of creativity and growth. And it's just gonna again, it's gonna backfire on them. You know, they were afraid that's gonna affect their, gonna affect their, their culture and and all the all the the young people is gonna mess them up for life. But at the same time, there that's possible. Some of it's true. But at the same time, they were becoming leaders in Asia and possibly the world if they would continue with this. And it's just sad to see the them cutting off their own right arm. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just stupid. The initial investment, including the staff overhead, is down the drain. Currently, there are more than 300,000 game-related enterprises with registered capital below 10 million renminbi in China. In other words, a large number of unemployed people are flocking to the market. That's going to drive down. That's going to drive them down wages. Increase, you know, the pressure on public services, and just, and just wipe out, wipe out the savings of all these young people. Let's go back to the live sales we talked about at the beginning of the show. Will it help solve part of China's employment problem? Chinese people are heavily dependent on the internet and cell phones due to vigorous promotion from the government. A bulletin released by China's National Bureau of Statistics shows that there were close to 1 billion people with internet access at the end of 2020, that's, that's and most huge. of them access the internet by cell phones. <laughs> China's media has widely reported the amazing results and wealth of China's live streaming celebrities. For example, 29-year-old Li Jiaqi is known as lipstick number one guy for his lipstick sales. 
During Taobao's biggest sales event of the year, he set a sales record of about 1.8 billion U.S. dollars in a single live session of 12.5 hours. 12 hours, 12 and a half hours, half a day, and this guy brought in sales of 1.8 billion U.S. freaking dollars. This is freaking massive. So they... <sighs> Let's see what China does with, with this. Um, I'm sure there's a, there's a, so many different issues that's going on, but this shows you the power of uh, the internet, power of, of, of celebrity and influence. And um, man, this is nowhere, this is, we're nowhere close to this, which uh, could be a good thing. Let's see. At the same event, another live streamer, Vaya, generated sales of about 1.34 billion US dollars in a live session of 14.5 yes. hours. In reality, data from Chinese media shows that leading streamers can earn more than 150,000 US dollars per month. 150,000 US dollars a month. Okay, this is US this is US dollars in China, okay? So this imagine like 3 4 5 10 times the value here. It's like us earning $500,000 a month. Uh, so this is when people see when regular people see this type of um when they see this type of money, it's kind of like, you could say kind of like OnlyFans, but instead of a few people earning, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe you have tens of thousands, if not maybe a million, I don't know, a million, but you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands earning this much. When you have that type of, uh, when you have that type of money uh, in, in a poorer country, in a developing country, you can have massive amounts of people trying to do this. But unfortunately, like anything, only a few people, you know, 0 0.001 can actually earn this type of money, then you can have a whole generation of young people want to be influenced and earn this type of money, but they're not going to earn anything near that, which could uh, pretty much wipe out years and years of um, uh, of the of uh, of the of specific generation. We're seeing that now with all these influencers, right? But this is a, this is on another level. Imagine that we see you know freaking hundreds of thousands, you know, million people earning a million dollars a month. We you know there's it's going to even be more skewed to social media, more skewed to uh, this type of uh, uh, behavior and dream. So I think they might have a cultural problem with this, not cultural, but socioeconomic cultural uh, problem uh, brewing with this because um, uh, it's so, so out of whack of what's considered normal. The less known ones may earn only a few hundred US dollars per month while 99% of live streamers operate at a loss. Okay, see that? I didn't read that until right now. 99 operate at a loss, 99% of streamers operated a loss. And if you imagine how many people are streaming, they're losing, 99% are losing money. So, of course, I don't know, China, do they want that? Do they just want a few people? It's kind of like a pyramid scheme, right? You only have a fraction of a percent earning money, but the rest is 99% not earning. How's that gonna, ha how's that gonna affect uh, the society um, going forward? Probably not in a good way. According to media data on the average income of Chinese live streamers in 2020, only 0.6% earn more than about 8,000 US dollars, and 84.1% earn less than 1,500 US dollars. We have analyzed in the previous episode that the booming industry of selling via live streaming in China is actually hurting many of China's grassroots retailers and creating more unemployed people on the other side. Yeah. Here, we briefly summarize this distorted economic model. According to the Ministry of Commerce of China, the size of China's live e-commerce population stands at 388 million users, accounting for nearly 40% of all internet users. Yeah, that's more than this US population. This market is expected to exceed 300 billion US dollars by 2021. Ooh. There is only one secret to the popular sales model of live streaming, low prices. The internet giants charge high platform fees and use smart algorithms to package and enable celebrity streamers, helping them gain huge traffic. The celebrity presenters enjoy a monopoly of resources, attracting thousands of suppliers. They then use low prices to keep the traffic flowing. Whoever has more followers gets a lower price from the suppliers. Live streamers also join hands to form a price alliance and demand lower prices from suppliers. The product that wins in the live stream sales is the one with the best price, not the best quality. So best price, best price, that's, that's, that's like anything, but I think they're saying that it, 
this system that's developing right now is driving down prices and the the sales yeah they're getting a tons of sales but it's not because it's just their celebrity celebrity brings them in but the low is the low price uh, that is key and these low price uh, have to be the pressure is put on the suppliers uh, and then they're selling them um, through this through this channel so that probably means that the regular brick and mortar they can't compete because they're already driving down the so the prices are so low uh, that when people go to the go you know go shopping they'll compare what they could buy online and they don't buy uh, they don't buy um, uh, in retail which will mean the the whole retail you know brick and mortar uh, shops will be uh, will be suffering, and that's still most of China. That is, the Chinese e-commerce giants have created a business model that draws in the profits from other sectors, such as distribution, department stores, warehousing, advertising, mini marts, and the purchasing power of people in third and fourth tier cities in China. The business cycle at the grassroots level in China keeps being disrupted, and the cost of the whole society is being pushed up de facto. Chinese internet giants, through leading live streamers, are shaping the production chain of daily necessities in China. The low price approach is giving rise to even lower quality goods. Where does that leave society? So lower quality goods, they're, force, they're forcing, right? The way that this works is, it sounds like they're forcing the people, uh, this, this, whole, this whole system is forcing prices down. So suppliers, they cannot deliver you know, decent quality for, for that price. So they continue to, continue to lower and lower the quality. And right now with China, most of this stuff is already crap already. And you're talking about lowering that? That's one thing with clothes and you know, things that you could throw away. But what what about food quality? What about you know um, you know medical quality? All those things that have to do with the health and safety of their people uh, is going to be put at jeopardy because of this new economic model that's forcing less and less profits, uh, therefore less and less quality. In late 2019, Chinese educational institutions surveyed Beijing elementary schools on what elementary students would like to be when they grow up. Nearly 80% of the students wanted to become online celebrities. Damn. If young people in China were to flock to a career as online presenters and then fail after a few years to seek a career that would suit them, the country's already fragile economy wouldn't be able to bear it. They would not, if you're talking about 80% of these, of their youth want to be the online presenters, 80% and only 90, I mean, and only 1% actually make money. This is a spelling disaster for Chinese society, okay, going forward. And like I mentioned before in my previous episodes, this coupled with the bubbles, coupled with fraud, coupled with all the you know government cor uh, corruption will lead to China crumbling, okay? Their society collapsing uh, in, the, in the next, I would say, two two to 10 years, and when they do collapse, it's gonna be a decades, multi-decade uh, step back. Uh, and they're gonna be, they're gonna be, they're gonna be put back, I really feel, for decades. And at that time, the US, the Western powers, India, some of Europe can reassert, reassert themselves as the top alpha economies in the world, specifically the USA. So this is gonna play out again over many, many years, but the way that China is, is going and has been going for decades, it's it's all coming to a head right now. And uh, I think the, the real estate, what's happening with the real estate, a crisis in China is going to trigger the water the waterfall of collapse from every single every single industry within China. Now even the top performers are living in a state of deep fear. On December 20th, 2021, Via was fined 210 million US dollars by the government for tax evasion. Afterwards, thousands of live streamers rushed to pay back taxes. <laughs> The Chinese public wonders if Via Falls will it benefit her only competitor, lipstick number one guy, Li Jiaqi. According to the Chinese media, the answer is not likely because the CCP doesn't want a monopoly. In fact, the Consumer Rights Protection Commission of Zhejiang Province has already interviewed 17 online live streamers, including Li Jiaqi. The commission specifically singled out his live streaming studio for irregularities in product labeling. 
It seems that the CCP is trying to rectify the problem of monopoly in the market economy. Previously, Chinese regulators investigated private internet companies such as Alibaba and Meituan on the grounds of anti-monopoly. Alibaba and Meituan alone were fined about 3.4 billion U.S. dollars for antitrust. According to data compiled by Haitong Securities, this far exceeds the average fine level of about 62 million U.S. dollars over the past five years. China, again, they're exerting their dominance over these industries and they do not want anyone, anyone thinking, remotely thinking that other people could come up and, um, and have power, some sort of power. And we're talking right now of financial monopoly, you know, selling power, even that. So th this girl getting fined $210 million, first of all, she has to pay it, right? Otherwise, uh, she's going to jail. And this is showing that China is showing everybody, it doesn't matter how rich you are, it doesn't mean how po popular you are, we're going to get you. So the, I, I totally understand where they're coming from. At the same time, when they are so harsh and so, and so heavy-handed right away, it can really hurt the entire industry and set them back for many, many years. Which uh, happening, which which is co coinciding with uh, the financial stresses and the potential, eh, not potential, the real estate beginnings of the real estate collapse in China. So this is definitely going to add to the force that's pushing China downward. Such antitrust is only limited to private companies, as it seems as the Communist Party is constructing mega state-owned enterprises at the same time, creating monopolies. As early as October 2020, the Chinese government deployed the three-year action plan for reforming state-owned enterprises 2020 to 2022. It stated that state-owned enterprises should become market players with core competitiveness in 2021. So if this is, if this is, okay, I predict, I predict China is going to, China's, uh, these like Tencent and Meitian or whatever that, that name is, all the Alibaba, these companies that are going to become more and more controlled by China and, and China might actually create and own these technology companies and hire out uh, these influencers. So these influence were, influencers will be actually part of the state-owned enterprise. The top ones are the ones that are coming up. So they see how much money they're making. So they have to either regulate them to death or to, to really subjugate them, to put their you know freaking heel on them or... Uh, get them, assimilate them into a company, into a government-owned entity. One, a number of mega state-owned enterprises have been formed in two alone in the month of December. They are China Rare Earth Group Limited and China Logistics Group Limited. The newly established China Logistics Group Limited has more than 600 branches, 120 dedicated railroad lines, 42 delivery houses, and nearly 3 million professional road freight vehicles. Its network of operations is spread across 30 provinces in China and five continents overseas. This scale is designed to give the company a significant competitive advantage in the international logistics market. On May 8, 2021, Sinochem Group Limited and China National Chemical Corporation Limited were jointly reorganized to form Sinochem Holdings with total assets and revenues of more than 157 billion US dollars. It's government. It's described by the CCP's media, People.cn, as the largest chemical company in the world. According to the Chinese media, nearly 40 state-owned enterprises have been restructured since 2012. An official from the State-Owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission of China said that the government agency will push for the optimization of the state-owned capital and create a number of leading enterprises in various industries. On yeah, I can see where they're going with this, but at the same time, you know, whenever whenever a government takes over, you know, uh, an industry, it's very difficult to compete, you know, on a world stage. Uh, recently, when the technology, when these technology companies were allowed to have some freedom, you see what happened. You see what happened with China. They really exploded with the, you know, with the online presence, with online, uh, online gaming. All, you know, the uh, freaking, of course, TikTok and uh, Weibo and you know, their Twitter and all that stuff. Now, it, it could, they could be really stifling growth and and uh, creativity uh, through more and more of these governments taking over or controlling uh, these industries, which will, I, I think, again, set them back in not the right direction. 
On December 31st, the Chinese government released its last Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, for 2021, saying the manufacturing PMI rose slightly to 50.3 from 50.1 in December, but the improvement was almost entirely concentrated in large enterprises. It's not yet known to what extent these large state-owned enterprises account in the index. It's the further reflection of effect of the country's policies to guarantee supply, stabilize market prices, and ease the pressure of companies. And our means of coping with epidemic and measures of prevention and control have improved, plus the fall of raw material cost to a certain extent. All this has contributed to the overall economic recovery and eased cost pressure. The CCP claims in its antitrust campaign that monopoly is inefficient and less innovative. But they're and doing antitrust it. Antitrust is good for the market economy. In practice, however, they are creating more mega state owned enterprises and turning a blind eye to their inherent monopolist nature. <laughs> it appears that the CCP believes in the superiority of socialism or the superiority of centralized power to solve the problems in the face of the dramatic changes in the international environment and the overall decline of the Chinese economy. This red system, as the Chinese people have been repeatedly told, can pool resources together very quickly to solve big problems and achieve big results. But of course, resources are most secure when they are concentrated in the hands of the CCP. <laughs> The new year is here. Beneath the still glamorous exterior, will the 70 year old regime's accelerated return to socialism and communism help it improve its economy, or will their policies simply speed up the CCP's collapse? So what do you guys think of what you just saw in my reaction? You know, I say over and over again, uh, and been going back for months, how how important China is uh, to, of course, the world economy. But not only that, I predicted that it's it, China may be the specific catalyst that drives the whole world's economy into a deep recession, if not recession coming up and i see that in china now so i'm focusing a lot of my stuff onto china because again what happens in china is going to affect the rest of the world and right now they have huge huge issues uh, so let me know if you want more of this type of content you like my reactions if you want other type of stuff put it in the comments i love you guys thank you so much see you soon